Hello guys and welcome to the Pro Dota Cup by Smashcast TV. We are in the winner's brackets finals with one of the most exciting games of the whole season. It's Wheel vs Thunder Awaken, two of the top teams in this Pro Dota Cup. Wheel, who has shown not only fortitude and strength, one of the most consistent teams I've ever seen in the American scene, but on top of that, versatility in picks, playing with picks that we all thought were a joke and actually winning with them, are now facing the ultimate opponents, Thunder Awaken, the ex-Peruvian overlords that are now trying to compete in the Pro Dota Cup, seeing if they can show their medal once again and prove that they deserve a spot. In some, you know, more international tournaments. But let's not get into that. We are, of course, in the Pro Dota Cup by uh, the American region, sponsored by XBet. If you guys want to use some live betting with favorable odds, I do suggest our sponsor, XBet. As if you go to the site and use code BOUNTYX, you'll get a deposit of 100 euros free. I don't really know how that works for Americans, but try it anyway. It's quite a lot of money, even if you true transform it. And it's great to help out, I guess, the Pro Dota Cup by going and checking out these great sponsors. Now, that said, let's get into the draft. But before we do so, allow me to present myself. I will be your only caster for today. Sadly, Vate has a trip to tomorrow and she won't be able to join us while well, I am sad too but at least my name being D Swordfish I'll be bringing you guys this amazing best of three between Thunder Awaken and a wheel wreck a while whistling let's see what the draft shows us Thunder Awaken we have Shadow Shaman and Puck already starting out take the page off we all wreck while whistling's book with taking the Shadow Shaman off their hands but wheel starting strong Konka and Crystal Maiden Ooh, maybe they're taking a page off Timado's book Silence from mid, I want to say. Probably for Annihilate. I can't imagine anything else. Very interesting draft, actually. You have... So, the Konka and Crystal Maiden are actually a very strong support combo, but they have one weakness. They're not particularly good lane dominators. Heroes like Nyx Assassin, Sand King, or other position force actually allow you to win the lane to some degree. Konka's harassment is more based around getting kills, so you don't really have that option. You're more based around a strong early game by trying to snowball out of kills together with crystal maiden similar idea she's not the best lane dominator she's more of a kill threat essentially so you really can't gank her too much especially because of her low body konka in the beginning has a pretty nice armor and attack damage but can't really do much after that and crystal maiden has no movement speed i mean not much armor or hp so this combination is based around getting kills which is why your cores need to be more of lane dominators which is why silencer is such a smart pickup here a hero that easily wins the lane, uh, gives you a pretty solid mid game, especially with heroes like Konka or Crystal Maiden, and best of all, he snowballs on kills, so he synergizes perfectly with these two supports that, again, want to get kills in the early game and try to win that way. And as for here, Thunder Awaken, Shadow Shaman, and Puck are their picks. So Puck, we still haven't, don't know if this Puck is going to be an offlane Puck or a mid lane Puck. Leo Styles Puck is pretty mean, but it's pretty great. But Smashes is as well as he used to be a mid laner himself. So this Puck for now, kind of a, a question mark in terms of what position he's going to be playing. And we'll see... We'll see what the Shadow Shaman and Puck combination works out to be. I mean, Puck is a pretty good laner in general in the off lane. Ooh, the Ricky is interesting. You combine it with a Shadow Shaman, really easy to punish people that try to gank this Puck. So if you play a bit aggressively, threaten some sort of aggression from Wheel, and then Shadow Shaman from the Shadows in case someone tries to gank the Puck. You actually combine this with a Ricky, it brings the slow for the Shadow Shaman so you can get closer, easier to get the shackles despite the low range on this hero. Honestly, it's a pretty good combination for Thunder awaken you get also a really decent team fight when you get to the mid game and if your early game goes well shadow shaman gives you that pushing power that you require usually to actually take advantage of strong lanes puck in general also not a weak laner in the mid lane even if he fights against silencer should do a decent job so not a bad lineup by them either and of course you have the combination of the smoke screen plus dream coil that can prevent picks like for example here on um, you know any sort of blinkers or storm spirits or that kind of stuff which is probably not going to get picked up now but it is a good combination to make sure that nobody can run away from the dream coil without getting hurt severely and of course the tricks of the trade plus dream coil is a classic on top of that you bring two silences to the mix which means that a lot of heroes kind of get thrown out of the pool and wheel is probably going to go for something along the lines of a sven a juggernaut maybe because he's a monta style user uh, not really a life stealer heroes that don't get hurt too much by silences and that can fight with strong bodies regardless ursa also comes to mind as a decent hero troll world actually even better than ursa because he relies a lot more on passes from wheel in fact troll plus Silencer is a disgusting combo, and I would not be too surprised if they decided to pick up. 
pick that up, but we'll see. And, oh, wow. <laughs> this is what I was talking about. Wheel goes for weird lineups, but it works out for them. Centaur. How long has it been since we see this hero? And actually, really good combination. When do you usually pick a centaur? Well, usually he's a hero that goes with a lot of melee heroes. Because you give him positioning. You allow them to be effective even without the usage of blink daggers. And you do have a melee hero here, that being Kunkka. But here, centaur actually works with something different. Both Silencer and Crystal Maiden, especially until Silencer gets his 4-step, are very weak in terms of movement. They don't really have any movement spells, and they can't really play aggressively without something like Stampede to help you out. Thunder Awaken ends this pick with a Darkseer themselves, allowing for the similar movement speed uh, buff with Ricky and Puck, which are probably going to benefit from it a lot. In fact, in the early game, Shadow Shaman Darkseer with a Surge is pretty effective, and of course, the Iron Show with the Ricky able to dominate or at least put a lot of pressure into the carry lane, forcing it so that Kunkka, at the, at the very least in the early levels, is going to have to stay. On top of that, Kunkka is a high HP and high armor hero, but one of the lowest regions out there compared to other, other roamers, like for example, Ogre Magi, and Iron Shells really take advantage of this wheel last ban is the sven and as per usual let's try to pick these last two picks thunder awaken need another ban as well what could they be banning here? So they need to be banning a carry themselves. The Sven would have been good for a wheel, but it also would have been fantastic for Thunder Awaken. Wheel still has the possibility of a troll that I was thinking about earlier, and troll works well with a Centaur and gives you the carry or the pushing power you really would like to use with the kind of lineup that you're running, which is more of a mid-game utility lineup. And troll is quite a fragile hero. Ooh, they banned the Meeple. That could have also been good with Centaur. But uh, Troll is also a fragile hero, which benefits from Centaur's utility items. We'll see. Thunder Awaken. Let's go for them first. It's a Van hero. You know, honestly here, something that's not too bad, it would be uh, the Slark, actually. Against the Centaur, he does pretty decently because he has high cast points. Not bothered by the Silences too much because Silencer doesn't have a direct silence. And Global Silence also has a long cast point in general. The Kunkka does bother him, but you can usually dispel the Torrent midway. And the Frostbite is also not that big a deal. I don't know, it's, a va it's Van, or Ban, yeah, because he's such a good player that you could have that. And you also combine well with Darkseer in general, the Surge is very effective, and you already have enough team fight in addition to strong lanes with a Shadow Shaman Ricky. And even though the laning phase Centaur might beat you, you stick the Shadow Shaman near him, and you should be fine. Juggernaut, another hero that works really nicely, just because Shadow Shaman, you know, and he also stops the Kunkka, X marks the spot, so... And Shadow Shaman, uh, the Juggernaut would be a particularly good hero. Life Stealer could be a consideration against a Centaur, but maybe not what I would run here, even though you do have two bombs to use him. And okay, nope, they're going for a classic pick, deciding on the anti mage. That's interesting. So that's more of a pick that not only Bond likes, but a pick that really, really counters the silencer. A bit hard to play against him, honestly, uh, because anti mage will be silenced with a global silence, but you usually carry a Manta style to dispel that anyway. You can dispel the Frostbite as well, and even though. Though the Kunkka X Master spot can be brutal against you, you do have some help from your supports to help you out. Now, Wheel, the ideal option here would have been Sven. You still have the Dragon, that's okay. Uh, maybe PA, actually. I gotta want to say, PA would not be bad. No, Lone Druid is the choice. Hmm, that yeah, Lone Druid. Okay, works nicely with Centaur. Assuming he's a Lone Druid, you know, the, the typical build of, of, of the pair. <laughs> Please. The anti-mage is not that effective against a lone druid that goes for the new build, or sorry, for the old build of maxing the bear, because that's how you play him nowadays. He brings a root against the anti-mage, which is quite effective. You are not too bothered by Shadow Shaman due to his low range, but Ricky can be a huge pain. I don't know, I don't know about this lone druid pick. KVH is a fantastic lone druid. And look at the other lineup a bit. You have some lane securing by Kunkka Crystal Maiden. Lone Druid is actually a hero that stays in... Oh, that's actually, we forgot about that. Lone Druid is a hero that likes staying in the lane a lot, so the movement by Crystal Maiden and Kunkka in the early game is much easier, as they can rotate out of the lane and leave Lone Druid completely alone. Crystal Maiden utilizing the jungle, and Kunkka himself just trying to, you know, gank. Lone Druid against, against the Dark Shield doesn't suffer too much, because the bear can tank most things, so you get him early tranquils and you should be fine. Maybe even go for an Iron Talon just to get the extra damage against the Dark Shield creeps. You're allowed to uh, secure the lane for Silencer, which is probably what you're looking for anyway. And on top of that, your mid-game bring... You had a lot of mid-game with Lone Druid taking advantage of Silencer's extra intelligence to deal a lot of damage to, for example, Anti-Major Puck. And, and meanwhile, the Lone Druid can do a lot of pushing power. And the Radiance can be really bothersome to an Anti-Mage, who usually does not like going for BKB and will always get that mischance during the whole game. Mm, especially if he goes for Manta style, going for BKB is a bit redundant on this hero. You might wanna, but it's not ideal. And the Lone Druid can really punish that. 
And Savage Roar can also be really effective to stop a uh, blink at the right time as you get a root plus a Savage Roar. You know, like say you root the anti mage, you want the Manta style her away. Nope, you Savage Roar him and you get that combination as well to work out. Or you can even X marks a spot plus Savage Roar. So anti mage can try to blink away at the right second. That's also a possibility. Yep. I actually like both lineups a lot. I'm glad that we're seeing some top tier teams. So that's uh, really nice. I, I'm, I'm glad that we get some some pretty quality Dota. I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I'm heavily biased towards both teams. I'm a big fan of Wheel and big fan of, of Thunder Awaken uh, as as players, right? Not as... <laughs> well, I'm a big fan of Wheel, period. And Thunder Awaken just as their playstyle is pretty good. It's good that we're gonna get some really high level Dota between these two teams. They're pretty close in terms of skill, I would say. In terms of drafting power, I would say that actually both drafts are quite equal, going for very different things, and we'll talk about it in a second as the game progresses. And on top of that, Though Thunder Awaken is less consistent than Wheel, when Thunder Awaken plays well, they are also they're all definitely at the level of Wheel, if not above, because they do have an insane amount of ability when they do play at the level that they need to. And Wheel is just insanely consistent, so during the game, tilting for Wheel is really rare. We'll see. I mean, this is the winner brackets final. We're going to the final after this one. Both teams are expected to be seen in the final anyway. Honestly, the only two teams that are left in this tournament are th are stars and they're stars and big fan probably, uh, which can face Thunder Awaken or Wheel. They're not going to be able to do much against these two teams. So these are expected to be the final anyway. Is a preemptive final for a lot of people, and it's going to be a best of three. We'll see what happens. Put your place your bets, boys. Are you going to bet with your uh, Are you going to bet with your heart? Or are you gonna bet with your brain? And which one's the right choice if you're betting with your brain? Ooh! <laughs> I'm excited. All right. Let's see. Light lags, as usually happens when Dota starts up. It's fine. I think this new uh, screen has been... Yeah. There it is. Okay, so we start the game in... Oh, sorry. The little alt thing. And then people ask why casters sometimes ping things, and unnecessarily, of course, because we don't want to ping anything, usually in the game, because it shows to all the streams. It's because the alt key weirdly gets stuck in Dota sometimes. So don't blame casters for doing that. Regardless, this is going to be good. Let's see. Look at the draft a bit more. I think we should present the teams, since the winner bracket is final. Both teams are pretty well known, but we'll do it anyway. And there's no stand-ins, actually, these games either. Well... I guess Leo style counts as a stand-in technically because he's been playing with this team for so long. And actually is stuck. No, no, he's not a stand-in. So, yeah, they're, they're, there's no stand-ins technically, uh, even though the stand-ins in official rosters. These guys have been playing together essentially the whole tournament. So we'll see how they do. Before we get into the game and actually analyzing, let's present the teams real quick. And allow me to present myself. My name is D Swordfish. I'll be your cast support today. Hope you enjoy the cast. It's a pleasure to be here today. Let's see what Wheels bringing to the table. Derp Derp is going to be running the Crystal May in the support position. The second support being a Kunkka played here by Mad Meng. And at the mid lane, I Annihilate on the Silencer. As the off laner, Centaur Warner played by Dota the 2. And finally, the carry is going to be KVH on the Lone Druid. As for Thunder Awaken, we're going to have Vaughn as the anti mage in the carry position. An off laner by the name of Smash playing at the Darkseer. The, per the teacher, as some Peruvians will call him. And Van, of course, the commander. Uh, we're gonna have Mystico, or M-God, as the Shadow Shaman in the support position. Second support being a Stock. And then finally, as the mid laner, straight from Elite Wolves, Leo Style. Gonna be running his famous, famous Puck. And we already see a bit of harassment here by a Stock in the mid lane against Annihilate. On the push him out of lane. Silencer tends to be quite weak in the early levels, but he already took that sentry down. Oh, wow, this is a really clever sentry. Ha! Huh. That was, that is impressive Annihilate. I was not expecting that. That's a really clever sentry placement. So, let's talk about it for a second. Because, you see, the the sentries usually for Ricky are placed around this area. Usually. Just to get maximum coverage. And Annihilate, careful. And he's going to be fighting against Leo Style. Glaives of Wisdom deal a lot of damage. Leo Style, you don't have phase shift. Annihilate might just murder him with Glaives of Wisdom. There's the salve. It was just a bit of harassment. Right. So, since sentries are usually placed around this area in general... Uh, you expect the sentry to be placed around here or around here, depending on if you want to use it offensively or defensively. Ricky's an offensive support, so you probably put the sentry offensively. So chances are you're going to be able to deward it from here without actually losing your own sentry. And of course, you still see a stoke if he tries to go against you and try to harass you under the tower, which is probably going to happen in the early levels. Works nicely for an elite. And now he also has a glaze, or sorry, an arcane curse to harass the puck a bit more. Punishes him for using phase shift and other such techniques, so that's quite nice. 
and you also take away some of the harassment. A top lane, interestingly enough, we're also seeing Dota 2 joining with Mad Ming. So it's going to be a Kunkka Centaur lane to start off. Since you know you don't want to leave the Centaur alone too much in the early game because you are fighting against... That's the last word. Uh, since you are fighting against a Shadow Shaman and they might just, you know, put you in a difficult position and leave you down. Dota 2 also wants to be able to get a couple of the last hits in the early game, try to get his basic items like Poor Man's Shield against the Shadow Shaman is quite important or maybe a, an early boot so you can prevent those prevent those um, shackles however in the mid lane they're going to annihilate arcane curse used up the stock harassing him quite a lot he's been slow but arcane curse is not going to be enough as his stock gets the final hit and the first blood on i annihilate meanwhile on the top lane ban will be going down himself as dota the two gets a gank from the crystal main x marks the spot plus torrent ensures that this anti-mage goes down swiftly and that's going to be a kill for a kill both teams are really even I mean, one is a mid laner, one's a carry, but one's an anti-mage, one's a silencer. Silencer can't recover as well, but the anti-mage really does rely on those timings, especially early on, where he doesn't have any recovery mechanisms whatsoever. It's honestly pretty even. And I guess, like I said, mid laner for carry, you don't really care too much. Now, however, you do allow the Ricky to be able to go to the bottom lane, which is what you want since the beginning. And with double Ion Shell, it's going to be really hard. However, really well placed Sentry by KVH. Stops his stock from harassing him. Here is Smash. Wanted to put a bit of pressure. Oh, actually, really clever use of the illusion. And there's two Rickies here. KVH taking a lot of damage and finally backstabbed to death as Ricky murders this poor lone druid. That turned out well. You see the Iron Shell on the illusion? I think he grabbed... I'm pretty sure that's an illusion rune, yeah? And so he put the Iron Shell there. You don't really know which one's the real Ricky. And you don't really want to stop the illusion entirely if you know it's an illusion because it's going to take way too long and you're going to die for sure. The Lone Druid early on does not have the highest HP, so Iron Shell actually does really bother him. And of course, you have the double Iron Shell together with one from the Darkseer, who can always surge. And even one for an early level of Vacuum, knowing that Smash is probably going to be able to dominate this lane to some degree. Now here though, Van, they find him with the X marks a spot. Help from Shadow Shaman, they still have the Shackles. Van is going to be stunned out with a Frostbite. Do they have enough damage? Probably not. Van actually wants to fight this. And there's the Shackles, they find Derp Derp, Mystico cancels them. And a bit of miscommunication makes it so that Crystal Maiden can make it out of there alive. And there is Stock going to Annihilate. Oh, careful. Waning Rift. Torrent will catch this poor Ricky. Evades it with a phase shift though. Annihilate will go down as his Stock sacrifices. No, actually, the Arcane Curse was already off by the time the Blink Strike came out. So that's going to just be a dead Annihilate. Hmm. Well, that's a good gank from the Ricky. Being very, very mobile around the map. Putting a lot of pressure. And it's true. He's not called Teacher. He's just called Prosor, which is not even Professor, right? And screw it. Anyway, Leo style in the mid lane, hit by Arcane Curse, a bit of harassment by Annihilate. He comes back, you know, full HP, full mana. You want to put a lot of pressure onto the puck, try to win this lane a bit more. We're talking about how strong Silencer is, and if it wasn't for this Ricky, he would have been doing much, much better in the lane. Not much you can do as a Silencer when you get ganked, though. Mad Ming, X marks the spot, ready for Van, and there it is, the stun. Van tries to blink away the torrent, that's the idea, and no, he won't be able to blink it in time. They kill him off really quickly as Mystico comes in with the shackles. They still have a second hoof stomp. Where are you going, Mystico? In the trees, try to create his own path he's juking them away and all the creeps are following him it's just a charge for mystico they finally clip him with that hoof stomp and mystico can he make out of here alive there's the help from ban joins in goes into mad Mang, but doesn't have any mana anyway to actually attack this and now centaur stuck in the trees he's not gonna make out of here alive maybe with a frostbite don't the two a beautiful hoof stomp onto two and he actually uses that double edge before he goes down but not gonna kill anyone that smoke is gonna prevent crystal maiden from using her frostbites eventually she's gonna be sliced and done to death that's gonna be too dead for the or wheel and even ban actually i mean surviving that in game i mean he's get killed the first time but surviving the second time i suppose so that's a two for one in the end but you do kill the enemy anti mage, which is pretty important and well with that the guys at wheel putting a ton of pressure uh, in to the early game for this anti-mage, but receiving all these comebacks from the Shadow Shaman this is exactly how you should be playing Shadow Shaman, which is you punish any sort of aggression by using proper shackles, and after shocking a really strong ability under tower, and in general, a big, big damage that makes it hard to calculate how long you can stay. Now, in the mid lane, I don't know the plan is to go against Annihilate. They have a Dream Coil, the smoke as well. This is what we're talking about. The Dream Coil will not break just yet. Annihilate right at the edge. Wants to fight this. Won't be able to. Will lo just lose his life against Leo Style's damage. With a magic stick, Leo Style should be fine. Actually, can just heal fully. And by the way, people are having issues with the live stream. And people that can, don't actually have issues with the live stream do inform them in chat that we upload all YouTube VODs. Is just, just check out my Twitter and there's the YouTube. And we upload all the VODs after the games. So if you have issues with the live stream, 
always free to check out the games on YouTube instead. Yeah, Smash Cast does not work for everybody, we understand, but that's why there's YouTube for it, right? Anyway. As Tok being given the Iron Shell, they want to go in and try to kill KVH. That's a bit of body blocking. Savage Roar to get his way out. KVH gets the TP from his friends. There's the bear. The, maybe the objective is just kill the bear instead. X marks the spot. It's Tok. Tries to prevent an initiation. Won't be able to. The Global Silence even hits him. And they're not going to be able to run away. That's going to be a dead Ricky. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, they go on to Leo style. Nope. Actually, both surviving now. Dusk catches this Tok. And he's going to go down. As in the mid lane, they also kill the Puck. Annihilate. Able to get that final hit on the last word. It was really hard to catch both kills, but I tried my best at doing so. <laughs> and with that, they actually get a double kill. Great usage of the Global Silence. And very clever movements here by Wheel, by the way. If you guys want to notice that. So they wait for the support, in this case the Ricky, to go down to the bottom lane. They knew that he was down in the bottom lane. It also prevented the Dark Shield from helping because he was low on mana. So even if he had a TP, he wasn't really able to do much and try to gank in the mid lane. You know, Ban himself is also low on HP, so he also can't gank, so the only person that could really help the mid lane would have been Mystico. You silence him so they can't just come in and shackles, which is what you usually do, as Shadow Shaman is one of those people that likes TPing last second and shackling, because of course it's like a surprise TP, you don't have to TP immediately, because you're not a healer, you're more of an offensive defensive support, if that makes sense, you deal damage as opposed to you saving someone last second, and so you can TP in, you know, shackle them on their tower and surprise, attack. And so what they did is, is they calculated the rotations perfectly. They rotate Crystal Maiden, you know, proactively per se to try to hunt Leo style down. And they use a global silence to not only bother the Ricky, sorry, so he can't use the smoke screen properly or the blink strike, but you also, of course, bother the puck so he goes down. With the damage Annihilate had, it was easy to ensure that. And with this Annihilate, it's a bit of intelligence. It's not the most. He's still going down in terms of net worth, or he's not really that high in terms of net worth, sorry. As the puck is still beating him by quite a lot. But again, those kills is important. And after all, you are still forcing the anti-mage to farm the jungle pretty early, which is not what Ban wants to do. And even though it's okay for him to do this, he has a decent jungle farming speed, it's going to definitely delay his battle fury to some degree. He might even opt for the Blads if he thinks that he needs some help from those kind of items. It, because sometimes if you don't get the battle fury too early, Blads helps him. And, I mean, it also gives you a bit of armor, which is not bad against what Long Druid might be bringing out to the table. Yeah, it's, it's oh, alright. But, uh, again, this this game, I think Ban is just going to try to rush that battle fury as soon as he can. He went for Treads for the extra resistance anyway. And Treads really help your farming speed out. And you also have Poor Man's Shield to help you out in the jungle. And Poor Man's Shield usually is enough. But, it's a consideration to be made. We also see a Puck by Leo style going for Treads early on. Not going to see the... At least not rushing the Veil Discord just yet. Usually you grab Veil Discord, then Treads, but... In this game, Leo style is uh, playing it safer with uh, cheaper items first, trying to engage in many more engagements early on. This is typically the Peruvian playstyle. I'm taking Peruvian, not even NA, it's actually just SA. Brazilians also play this way as well, which is usually keep a uh, low GPM on the variety of heroes. And let me name a team, of course, keep a low GPM game, take advantage of that by having really cheap but efficient items, and you make the enemy team play your game, essentially. And they both know until it's too late, right? Because they're going for more expensive items, and you punish them to, for doing so. Though, Thunder Awaken specifically also likes doing that with a 4 protect 5 strategy, where Ban is still firing really well, but everyone else in, in your team is kind of just being aggressive. And now you get a, a bit of time for Annihilate to farm, for KVH to farm. Wheel's really enjoying this time down, per se. As uh, Thunder has lost her in early game efficiency. And now has to face a Kunkka and a Crystal Maiden in the mid game. Much harder to deal with those heroes. Yeah, some people are commenting in chat. Wheel does rotate really well. They have good vision as well in the map. But so does Thunder, honestly. Uh, you see these kind of offensive-ish wards where they... These are... Uh, rotational wards, that's, if that makes sense to people, I guess. There's not really a name for it, but essentially you catch rotations more than you catch someone. Nobody's ever going to hang out around this area, but you will catch someone, you know, going that way. Similar to with this, my, someone might hang out at the shrine, but it's a very common place for people to pass by if you're radiant. Just in general, because it's a pretty safe spot as the, the TPs can come at any time. So you can't gank someone around this ward, right? But you can find the rotations and understand it and take advantage of that, right? As for wheel, they are much more aggressive wards after traditionally, right? You, if you fight around this area, again, you catch rotations and TPs, but more importantly, you can also fight around that area and get advantage, and use your crystal maiden and your Kunkka for for you know kills in the off lane, for example. Now here though, the smoke very clever. They won't see Leo style or a stock. They even have a sentry there, so they're pretty confident about this ward. And with the smoke, they're gonna surprise him entirely. Leo style walking in, and there it is, the dream coil committed. Also the smoke, Silence Lone drew it. He doesn't want to break the ring coil, but he's gonna break his own life. as KVH and dies to Leo style's damage, winning Rift too hard on him. And with that, they might even be able to take a tower. 
Same time, though, we'll do the same in the top lane without actually committing that many resources. Only a small two-man rotation. No kill from it, true. But you do take the tier one anyway. And, okay, in this mid lane, do they want to fight against Ban? Uh, a lot of damage from Annihilate. He didn't go for the spell shield build, of course. It's, I mean, that's, that build is rare. and <laughs> It's not going to happen this game where you don't have that much magical damage. That's another tier one trade. So, uh, safe lane tier one for safe lane tier one. Honestly, both teams are insanely even. Now, let's see. Ban uh, sees the double damage rune. He's going to give it to Leo style. Oh, I just see it. Oh, wow, that's interesting. So they give uh, double damage to Ban so he can actually farm faster. That's so clever, I couldn't even check their inventories in time. No, it's not clever. So uh, fast, I couldn't check their inventories in time. That's communication, boys. So Ban fa farms a bit faster. And like, you, like I said earlier, they do give a lot of priority. Look at the net worth to Ban to try to farm. After a really bad early game, he's recovering best he can. And they're trying to fight his four with the rest of the team with a four protect five strategy. That usually actually works out, especially with this anti-mage. We've seen this before. Actually, we saw it last tournament. It was specifically against Wheel. <laughs> And it worked out for them. It's just that later on in the game, the puck starts losing protagonism. Good thing is Smash this time has much more form than he did with a Bat Rider, I believe. It was last time they played this. And it's going to help him out coming to mid-game as Smash will be able to get those utility items a bit sooner. Even rush the mech before Arcane Boots, which is more common for a team fighting build and a lane dominating build. Anyway. Here you see, oh, careful, silence, stops the puck from jaunting away, Torn to bring him up, bring him back down to a stun from the hoof stomp, and this perfect chain of stuns will destroy the puck. Nothing you could really do about it, honestly. And in the t mid lane, they get a smoke screen. Stop the loner for a bit, smash, vacuums him back to the smoke screen. Oh, KVH might be able to make it out of here alive. Where's Ban? Joining in, he stars the Iron Shell, wants to find KVH. Good Savage Roar to stop him, but the Blink is available once again. And Ban finding him, they stop the bear, good shackles. Mana Void to finish him off, the bear himself just... <laughs> Dies in the back lines, and Thunder will be able to take the kill onto Lone Druid for a kill on the puck. Pretty even trade, especially considering Lone Druid is top in the net worth anyway. And they don't lose the tower as a result as they force a rotation from Wheel. There's X marks to spawn to a stock that can get an easy torrent, plus a sentry already laid down. A stock stunned again. Beautiful stun chain of stuns again. Honestly, they're doing this perfectly. That combo uh, probably is easy to do, honestly, but that combo with the Konka, Hoof Stomp, it's working out really nicely. And Dota the Two is not forced to go for such an early Blink Dagger. He's still going to go for an early ish Blink Dagger. Not going for Vanguard and Crimson Guard early or even Pipe, just casual hood and then straight up Blink Dagger, because that allows him to play a bit more offensively. That's not a bad idea. Don't depend on your Konka's X marks the spot after all. You'd rather just be able to initiate yourself. And especially against an anti-mage, that's going to be very, very useful. So, for now, Wheel, uh, getting those ganks actually destabilizes the game a bit. Their net worth goes a bit in their favor. And we already see that KVH, meanwhile, is not participating in them. It's, again, similar to how Ban is playing. They're letting him farm a lot, trying to get... She going for a Midas already, got the Midas of Spirit Bear, that Midas is much more effective than Battle Fury if you get it really early to, to farm, because you don't need resources, just create them. And oh, smoke screen finds the Ricky, he's been silenced, X, mm, well, they can still kill him though, they have a sentry there, and X will not hit, there's a stun from Dota 2 to stop and smash his initiation, a stock actually heals the magic stick, there's a vacuum plus a dream coil, mm, not much damage, his stock is already dead, where's the freezing field, they already destroyed Derp with a mana void, Ban taking a bit of damage, has the blink to run away, but smash will go down first, and they just losing people left and right, and I like dealing way too much pure damage, and did he max slaves of wisdom, yeah, he already has max, there's X marks a spot, find Ban, where's the torrent, madman can't use it yet, global silence, though to stop his blink from happening and that's gonna be a dead anti-mage thunder awaken just lost four in this engagement it went completely in favor of wheel this is the power of a kunkka in the mid game x marks the spot alone already very effective carrying a bunch of sentries to prevent the ricky from having well any sort of power with that smoke screen and forcing thunder awaken into unfavorable matchups meanwhile kvh during this whole time just farming alone trying to get some farm up on that little bear and of himself well, well as, as the last hits were happening, of course, because they don't really want to rush this, you know, they want to make sure that this Laundry gets the farm necessary to take down towers. And that Blink Dagger working really nicely when you're playing so offensively. Now, with a pipe, you'll start, you'll stop most of this puck's damage, especially since this puck did not decide, or actually maybe, no, he did not decide to go for Blink Dagger, or for Bale Discord, sorry. He decides to go for Blink Dagger instead, great initiation, lacking damage, pipe counters you completely. That's what's so fantastic about the... The, the pipe on the on the centaur actually works really nicely this game. You're going to depend a lot on the magical damage in the early game from the puck and from the dark seer. Pipe counters that completely and you didn't go for any ways to amplify it so the pipe will, will be enough to stop it. Now Derp Derp dies in the bottom lane but that's just a kill on the 
Crystal Maiden. It does speed up the Battle Fury, but it's already late. With travel or with treads, you expect the Battle Fury minute 15. Obviously, Bon won't have that great GPM. He's a bit below it, a bit below 400. As a result, he won't be able to get that Battle Fury in good timing. He still can recover, though, as anti just usually can. Honestly, it's not the end of the game if you don't get the perfect timing. It's more of an efficiency thing, really. And he just bought it. Oh, before minute 17. Minute 17 is when you start saying, ah, that's a bad Battle Fury. Minute 20 is your screwed. But minute, minute 17 is like, okay, I didn't do too well, but it's still time. You know, there's still time to win. And now you can start farming really fast, of course. And he should be able to outfarm a Lone Druid in general. He grabbed an early Midas, and that Midas helps you out a lot, of course. But it does not compare to a Battle Fury's farm if you do have the space to use it. So in the early game, since you've got a pretty decent Battle Fury, you can a you're able to use a lot of space because you should still have Tier 2s up and farm the jungle quite efficiently. Especially with an Anti-Mage as they don't... I mean, they have quite a lot of stuns, though. I don't know how much they can punish this Anti-Mage. And no, it's stuck. It's giving a bit of vision, seeing the enemy team, but not engaging. And the whole point here is to try to give a vision of the, vision of the enemy team so that Ban can... Uh, Farm efficiently, and even they saw him, they pinged him, but Ban knew exactly where they were because they saw the positioning. And Stoke might even find the courier. Actually, is this going to be a courier sniper? Easy, that's face boots. Okay, courier staying there too, a bit too long. Oh, oh, oh! The courier evades the damage, uh, completely unknowingly, <laughs> completely unknowingly. They just take with a lone druid, and well, I think they just bought it to the lone druid there, and no, they they know this. Stoke might just find it in the trees, in the trees. But of course, Lone Druid is guarding that courier, making sure it doesn't go down. It's a lot of gold still early on. And now we see a bit of a smoke gank using a Stoke's vision. We're thinking this whole time they're going to the courier, but the smoke gank should be quite obvious. The lanes, I mean, they're pushed. You might not know they're in the jungle, though. AVH. Are they going to go on to him? Surge, smash, goes in. Bear stops him. They want to catch the bear instead. At least the hex. Oh, no. There's the TPs. Wheel wants to fight this. They find already Mystical, and he's going to go down first. Smash might be the next target. They have a Crystal Nova, can't really stop a surged up Darkseer, but Derp Derp herself is really fast. There is the Crystal Nova and a Frostbite not committing to this Derp Derp. And from behind, we see a Stalk also giving a bit of vision on this Lone Druid. In the end, Wheel. A lot of TP is forced out of them. Only one kill, but hey, it's better than losing your Lone Druid. And of course, Thunder Awaken still wasted that smoke. Let's see, they go on to Lone Druid at least with the Dream Call committed. He's been silenced, can't really do much. Vacuum to bring him back into that circle of death. And with that, Lone Druid will lose his life. Just a small gank. Turns out Wheel got a bit cocky. Thought, you know, we can, we can just leave him there to farm. But Thunder Awaken, the hyper-aggressive team will continue until you die. Literally. You know, they're like a parasite. They just will stick against, will stick on you until you are literally dead. And then they have to leave. You, there's nobody, nothing there. Now, x the Spot finds this Shadow Shaman. No need for the Torrent, but they use it anyway. Annihilate takes two more intelligence to his name. And, of course, gets that kill because that glaze of those Glaze of Wisdom are ridiculous. He actually even opted for the 7 Intelligence for more offensive power, even though I'm not that big of a fan of it. To be honest, usually 4 armor is just value-wise better. But, hey, uh, if you're going for Dragonlance early, you got a good amount of farm. You already got Rod of Atos anyway for tank ability. I understand the 7 Intelligence. It's a bit more damage. Why not? It actually adds, I mean, 80% of 7 is like 6 damage, I suppose. <laughs> and of course, that mana region and whatnot, it's only an early talent, it's not that big a deal. Going for the Dragonlance, and of course, the Hurricane Pike, it's going to be brutal. Because Silencer, if you do decently in the early game, becomes essentially an OD. And of course, Rod of Atos, typical item on carry Silencer. Oh, okay, that was dangerous, Buck. That could have been Atos and dead. No, I guess no, you can, you can still jaunt, that's fine. You can play really aggressively here. And let's see, the Puck sees Derp Derp. They have Vision, Vacuum, Derp Derp, not brought on the wall replica, so there's no slow. Still pretty slow, though, as he's Crystal Maiden. And there's the Iron Shell. They actually find the poor Ricky. Good use of the smoke, but he'll die anyway. Well, Guardian Gear's trying to save him. He's been silenced for far too long. Gonna go down eventually. Yeah, there was a lot of commitment there, but... <laughs> a lot of commitment by everyone. They even used the Guardian Gear's in this Ricky, but they couldn't save him. It's unfortunate. Wheel decides that it's time to go for the tower down bottom. With the help of a catapult, should be possible. And like I said, guys, Wheel. Looking better and better every day. I mean, with a 2k lead. I start putting a lot of pressure onto uh, Thunder Awaken. I mean, they had 3k earlier, so I guess it's not that big a deal. But they, they can now start pushing towers and forcing Bond to farm in more aggressive positions so they can catch him out. That's the idea. Don't let him farm in his jungle as safely by ta taking all the tier 2s and all that vision. And this tower will probably go down. 
I think I try to defend this. Uh, the silence can help. Mad Mang actually finds Xbox spawn to Leo Style. A Tone to Smash as well. Guarding Grief to dispel it. And there's the boat. Will not find Leo Style, but Smash still in a bad position. The vacuum will not do much as he's been rooted down and not destroyed yet. As they forced out the silence to safety from the Dream Coil. Uh, he has to run away. Good stampede. Leo Style still chasing him. Annihilate. Gonna TP in, so in front of Leo Style's face, but the Yo will cancel that TP. As the rooted Ricky will go down. Annihilate now fighting a 1v1 against the Puck. Both of them die. And the Mana Void finishes off a silence. It's now time for Bond to clean up house, but of course with the torrent and the frostbite, he can move anywhere. Bond has enough mana for a blink. Does he want to commit? There's the frostbite. Going to the dark seer. The creeps are helping out, and dark seer is so close to dying, but there's not enough mana. The crystal made him for a second frostbite. In the end, Thunder Awaken will take the life of the silencer, which with a fantastic mana void. But in exchange, you'll lose the puck and the Ricky both to the silencer, ensuring that he gets essentially four intelligence, which is not good. He's also really close to that hurricane pike to help him out. And again, Lone Druid during this whole engagement, and as he keeps on, he keeps the farm up, grabs his radiance. I actually don't know where his bear is. Oh, there it is. I keep tabbing. <laughs> I'm so used to playing uh, these heroes, I just tab to see where the bear is. It's not there. Uh, so radiance, radiance and the bear already up. Yeah, it's gonna start. Doing a bit of pushing in other lanes, uh, which makes a lot of sense. And Mystico in the top lane. Oh. Okay, and TP, TP. Nope, go to the two. Stampedes immediately. Mystico. Well, I guess you can't really do much if you're a Shadow Shaman. You get caught in a bad position, and no matter what you try to do, if anyone's near you, you're dead. Annihilate himself, gonna go for a Hurricane Pike. No, no, there's a stock. Might find the silencer. He has a four staff though. Be able to get away from that smoke screen soon. Uh, the vacuum can bring him back though, so that's four staff is not so safe. His stock is vision. There's the anti image. Walks in and island needs to force himself away. The vacuum used a bit too early in the stun. Turn the two. They want to turn this around. Global silence. Also the dancing crystal man. They stop with the Yule scepter. Root it down the anti image, and he will blink in la or blink out last second. Van surviving. They know where he is more or less. The radiance ought to catch him, but of course the spell shield is gonna prevent some of the damage. Van will he TP in time? Yes, he will. Will unable to get that such a valuable kill onto the anti image. A really good turnaround of the team fight though, with a global silence and a freezing field to boot. But Leo Style saving his friend with a great yield scepter stopping that freezing fuel from being effective no oh, okay that's the healing I, was gonna, I just heard the x mark the spot yeah a bit of healing for annihilate he's fine honestly he has a lot of regen himself i don't know <laughs> the curious king is hurricane pike could have just done that to get his hurricane pike whatever this tisk not enough efficiency Right, it's talk again, giving vision into smoke, but it's only smash running in first. Okay, anti mage joining in as well. There's this talk, walks in, dream coil only on 2 1. Ricky also using tricks of the trade, and Annihilate starts hitting. He's been silenced. Where's the ghost ship? Only a bit of buff to Annihilate. Derp Derp actually goes invisible and will be invulnerable to Van's damage as his talk goes down to Annihilate. Derp Derp somehow still surviving here just with a usage of a shadow amulet. There's the root, catches the shadow shaman. He is not gonna go down just yet as our cane curse is just solely chipping him away. Annihilate wants to get the skill but won't be able to the shadow shaman tps in time and in the end that's only a kill onto a ricky maru on one of those engagements from thunder that just doesn't go as well as they expected I -jai -jai, a lot of i -jai -jais, you know and uh, knowing that they're losing too many people here maybe bond needs to start pushing or farming himself stopped and stop being part of these engagements or just you know in general play defensively you don't really want to play too defensively against a side sword uh in a lone druid of course but We'll see. A blink dagger is next time on Annihilate, so that you can withstand these, you know, blinking and annoying shadow shines a bit better. That makes a lot of sense. And now, frostbite on Roshan. He's gonna go down eventually. Annihilate taking the Aegis, because of course he's the most fragile target. This Thunder Awaken, how will you bring him down twice? Is Stalk actually going for traditional build? Diffusal Braid Ricky. Seems like this position 4 is going to be a force to be reckoned with, at least in physical damage. And, I mean, that, usually you go for stats build nowadays. Ever since Bobo Cup played that <laughs> triple ring of Aquila, you do like kind of utility Ricky. But I understand this a lot. You go for force that Lotus Orb, those kind of items as well on him. But uh, Diffusal Blade, I mean, you need some damage. Because otherwise, how are you going to kill Annihilate? You're only relying on this anti mage for now. And he still hasn't farmed enough to be relevant to, to well, to just destroy Annihilate. Because Annihilate's Glaze of Wisdom are just a threat to the anti mage. It's pure damage. It deals a ridiculous amount of damage in general. And anti mage himself does not have the highest HP ever. 
a decent strength, uh, sorry, but bad strength game, but decent, you know, strength items he grabs, but you still need a lot more items to become, you know, tanky per se. What are we seeing here in the bottom lane? The spirit bear, ooh, taking away the bear from the lone druid. Animal abuse happening in this bottom lane, and that's gonna be a dead bear. All right. Let's see. The lone druid is still has a second bear, so okay, they just don't really care about that engagement. They're gonna st start putting a little bit of pressure. Onto the tower. It's smoke to prevent the attacks, but Annihilate still hits from really far. So, and he hits pretty hard because he gets the extra intelligence, so he's fine. And they take the tower and walk away. That wall replica did absolutely nothing. And go smash. Leo Stahl from behind. He's been rooted. Leo Stahl using the Yo Scepter. Where's the wall replica? Already used earlier, so of course they can't do it. Now the global silence. They turn this around. A ghost ship to find Bond as well, but he will be able to blink in time. All the buybacks coming in from Thunder Awaken. A torrent from Darkseer. Getting found out. There's the root, and oh god, Smash is he gonna die? Leo starts to save his teammate out. They actually can't hope stomp him. The X marks the spot though, will find Smash anyway. Savage Roar just giving him a, a bit extra movement speed. Not too effective. They shackle the bear, they try to kill him, but Annihilate might just wanna annihilate Mr. Mystico with four attacks from the Glaze. It's possible the Hurricane Pike dealing way too much damage. How is Thunder Awaken supposed to defend this? Leo Star has been rooted. He tries to blink away. Yo Scepter himself off, and Face Shift is still available, but they can stop this with a torrent. Maybe not. They actually don't have any silence. Another vacuum plus a dream call. Leo Star trying to get a bit of space. And Annihilate can't actually chase after him. The Hurricane Pike not giving him enough range. That smoke will do absolutely nothing to the Silencer. And they take Elena Rax. Now going for the Shrines. Playing safely but efficiently. Wheel. Uh, literally the living image of consistency. There's a double stun. No, actually doesn't catch a stock. But we'll find uh, poor Smash anyway. The ghost to the face. Or the ghost ship to the face. And a dead Darkseer indeed. And with this, I... Honestly... Looking, it's looking bad for Thunder to Awaken. Wheel have taken a huge domination, and I know Bond is, has done this before, where he just carried his team, where nobody in his team did you did anything really, and it was I remember Greedy Viper in the middle lane. But can he do this again? I don't know if it's the safest of bets, especially when you're playing against a Silencer. He can do a lot of damage to you. They want to catch someone out. They know Mystico is here. Mystico actually did his best job at unveiling the smoke. His stock is instead the target. Turks to the trade to evade that X marks the spot. They still stun him out. They have vision of him, of course, as Mad Mang has a gem. And with this, they'll get the kill onto this poor uh, Ricky Maru. I do believe that he bought... No, no, he did not. So that's uh, not the extra time on the buyback. He has not buyback anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But hey, Darkseer did, did buyback, of course, and so did the Puck. Puck didn't die. Darkseer did. In case people missed that, because there were so many things happening. So much domination. Now they go onto the tower in the top lane with a push of this lone druid. Hard to defend it, especially with the help of that battle cry. Tower goes down. Now the objective is the Rax and Thunder. How are they supposed to fight this without? I mean, without items, only the anti mage can really fight against the enemy team. There's an X again, Mad Mang. So it's clear they want to continue this aggression. If all this time you see them like TPing away, trying to defend this, whatever, but. The truth is, they don't want to stop putting up the aggression. They want to—they have the water against the neck of Thunder Awakens. Well, hypothet hypothetical neck. And they just want to put the last nail in their coffin. They can under the lane of Rax. And continuing with their push. And oh. And we see anti -mage. Ban is farming so offensively. This guy, this guy, man, has a huge set of balls because he's not being caught out by just pure chance. With that minus one second blink cooldown, not surprising. It's going for a lot of power. Uh, however, he needs the BKB soon enough, and well, we'll see if he can bring this back for his team. It's only one lane of racks left, and the best thing to do against a blinking anti mage is not try to play his game, but instead. Actually try to... Oh, okay, careful. Actually, Dota the 2. They cancelled the uh, X mark the spot. The defensive one, of course. Dota the 2 has to stampede himself away. And all they did is lose some efficiency, but he didn't die. Of course, he lost the ultimate, but that's not that big a deal. Pretty low cooldown on it anyway. Let's see if the anti mage can recover this game for them. As an I Annihilate already has those 32 intelligence to his name. Gonna be getting a Scythe of Vice very soon. Oh, he's been hexed up. There goes Mystico, the shackles as well. They want to kill him off, and with the Abyssal Blade, it might be possible. They're going to take away all his mana. Where's the ultimate? I Annihilate survives it. He's running away, but Ban will just slice him one last time. 
right to the jugular, and Sansa will lose his life. Try to kill the courier, was that the idea? Now, to sacrifice the illusions, why not? Your anti is only level 24, it's only 48 gold to name a team. At this point, it doesn't really matter. And... Well, we'll see what... We will be doing. As they get a four staff onto Mad Men. Also, a bit more utility onto this guy. Actually, very much a utility, Kunkka. And we'll see if uh, they're a bit scared of this ban. Honestly, he's, he's starting to snowball like you expected an anti mage getting into the late game. Trying to grab that BKB. Of course, the lack of offensive items might end up biting him in the ass as BKB. Not that great of an item when you have to deal with a lone druid who also built his assault grass and is ready to use it onto this anti mage. That minus armor is so effective against a hero. Well, actually, no, not with a 25 agility. Probably what he's going to go for. Actually, you could go for the minus 50 seconds mana void cooldown. It wouldn't be a bad idea, but I think 25 agility is more traditional. Mainly because mm, 20 second vo mana void, so you can kill the silencer over and over again. But then you still have the concern of a lone druid. And of course, with the bastard, it's just much more beneficial. What's that next? Just a TP. And anti mage himself gets a BKB. Alright. Well, that's finally completed. There's a time to fight now. We all certainly think so. Yeah, not even going for Roshan, which is, oh, of course, not possible. <laughs> Look how stupid of me. Uh, the 40 seconds till Roshan comes back, so. That's gonna be a big factor. Torrent sees the ward. Yeah, a bit of de warding that Torrent. Take the last shrine. And, ooh, it's actually Thunder who's gonna start this team fight. This might be the last one in the game, as the anti mage does not have buyback. Alright, let's commit. Put all your eggs in one basket. Uh, go on to Derp Derp. Oh, a really fast pig. They don't care about it. Xbox spot to bring him back. And they kill the two supports really soon. At least one of them will die. But Anti Mage in the back lines goes up against Annihilate. Destroys him in just a couple hits. Savage Order to save this lone druid's life. But Vaughn already killed one core from the enemy team. They only lost two supports. The Frostbite fans the Anti Mage. Here's the BKB. It's time to fight back. He goes against Order of the Two. Doesn't care about the damage. Also against KVH. But of course, he can't last here too long. Leo still, meanwhile, creating space for his team as he just forces the enemy team to concentrate onto him. The agility finally up on this anti mage grabs it just after this team fight and sadly the bkb will be wasted not able to take make good use of it but they kill annihilate yet again however the threat is going to start becoming this lone druid and anti mage needs to deal with him somehow that's going to become a real issue because after all you know, Ban, Ban really has to rely on that BKB. Let's see what Wheel is building up. We see a heart on the Centaur, so Return starts hurting. Of course, the only reason. Nah, it's it's the Reach, and obviously it's very useful. Lotus Orb, going to be also very useful. Actually, not a bad idea to get Return to start hurting a bit, honestly. 40, like, every time they hit you is, what, 30 damage? Uh, it's, it's somewhat relevant against a hero like Anti-Mage. It doesn't have that much, that much HP. Lone Druid himself. Let's see what items he's went for. Actually, oh, that's, I was going to say, why does he have a heart? That's a Basher. Ooh, Abyssal Blade. That's very important to stop the Anti-Mage. That Abyssal Blade might just... Give them the advantage they need to win the game. Uh, stopping the anti-mage for just a couple seconds should allow KVH to kill him, especially with a war cry. And an assault caress. He's already level uh, close to level 25. Got all the necessary things. Probably gonna go for the extra entangle duration, I wouldn't say, on the anti-mage actually. There's a dead Ricky. Ghost ship to the face, and Ricky literally turns into a ghost. Let's see. Wheel. Tired of the rat dota, tired of the games. They got the Aegis. They got a cheese as well. Both on KVH, uh, actually no, Cheese is on KVH, sorry, and uh, Aegis on Annihilate, because he's always the first target. Very clever idea. And now it's time to push this last lane of Towers. Okay, Dota the Two says, screw it! And actually, Towers getting hit quite a lot by that return. With the heart, of course. Oh no, Silencer went to the wrong place. Vacuum was wall replica. There's a Dream Call onto four. Can they finish off anyone? The Torrent actually gives him a lot of space. Dota the Two, he's not the best objective. Van can kill Annihilate, but he still has the Aegis available. And now Van is fighting against the whole enemy team. KVH chooses the cheese, given to him by the bear, but he lost his lone druid bear. And the Crystal Maiden will be the only real death by Wheel, but they lost both their items, both the cheese and the Aegis. Get a second bear. And is it really time to fight this? I mean, the enemy team lost a lot of their ultimates, though. No wall replica, no vacuum. Maybe you wait until the vacuum actually, you know, runs away. Thought of the two. Starting to harass these towers just with return. That's the idea. The anti just won't let this happen. And there's a silence onto the lone druid. They don't have any way of stopping him anymore. Estolka still has the tricks of the trade. Which does nothing, but I guess I should just mention it. The valuable ultimate. There's a smoke screen. Now it's time to go on the lone druid. He's slowed down. Also stunned down. And he's been silent for quite a while. He doesn't 
have anything. There goes the Shadow Shalom. He can't do anything against the Lone Druid. His Stoke being hit by the Stampede. So much damage. This Ricky will die in just four hits. Now, Van, how are you going to fight without your team? X marks the spot for Storage. We'll keep him in place. They actually missed the combo. And they can't kill Van in time. This might be their chance. Dream Coil. They save him. And now it's time to the start to come in with a waning rift. They go into the Silencer. They already lost the racks, but the time is to kill Annihilate before they lose this game. He's been hexed up, and they're gonna have ham for dinner. It's Von dying finally in this team fight. He still has the buyback, but how are they supposed to fight this? Yule Scepter not available for Leo Style, and they can't cancel that TP. KVH will survive this engagement, and if they want to survive, they gotta waste a BK or a buyback on Von. Whew. That was a pretty good idea, a uh, pretty good team fight in general, you know, good thoughts, not many mistakes by Thunder, honestly, but you just didn't have enough to kill this uh, lone druid, maybe the idea of going against the centaur so early was not that great. And of course we completely forgot how much damage the stampede can do if you get the this much intel, this much strength. What is it, 164? That was actually quite ridiculous, because it's, I, it's a pretty decent amount of damage you get on everyone, so it's 164 times 3, it's around 480, more or less. A bit more. 492, I think. Yeah. And... Oh, hexed up. What are you doing, Mystico? Mystico. Torrented and destroyed. Oh, that just happened. Cool. I mean, he didn't miss that Torrent combo and Mad Men, which would have been ideal. I think it might have been on cooldown, which is why he might have missed it, regardless. The... No, no, because he, he brought him back just a second too early. Or a second too late, sorry. Now, let's see. They start hitting these towers. And that, that return is horrendous against these towers. They force the buyback on the anti mage. That's the idea. Warcry tears into these towers like they're made out of butter. There's the vacuum. Global silence to prevent any combo initiation. No wall replica here. Not like wall replica is that good against the lone druid in general, but hey. They try to defend as best they can. They don't want to give up this game number one. X marks the spot. Might find Ban. There's the torrent. Uses the BKB. Kill the Konka. Punish him for all his misdeeds. Can Ban do it? Mm, actually. It's a bit difficult. He goes into Maddening, but in behind, they're actually fighting against only two. Dota the two doing a lot of damage onto Leo Style. Dirt Turbo loses life, but the Freezing Field did a lot of damage anyway. And KVH finishes off the anti mage in the back lines. Now the Ricky almost dies to the Mega Creeps. In the end, he'll lose his life. And it's time for Wheel to end this game. Taking the Ancient and game number one. Minute 38, second 35. Wheel beat Thunder Awaken in the first match of the winner's brackets. Securing themselves. Well, actually, no, making it so that they're a step closer to get into the Pro Dota Cup American Regions Finals. We'll come back very shortly with game number two of this series. Hope you've enjoyed the game. Hope you've enjoyed the cast. My name is D Swordfish, and I've been your caster for today. If you did enjoy the cast, feel free to follow me on Twitter. If you didn't, feel free to flame me on Twitter. You know, they all start with F. Uh, let's call it uh, FMT, yeah? Follow me or flame me. Woo! Anyway, uh, this has been the Pro Dota Cup American uh, version sponsored by Xbet. Do check out Xbet, our sponsor. They make this tournament possible and they also offer live betting with favorable odds. So I do suggest you check them out. And of course, we'll come back very shortly with game number two between Wheel and Thunder Awaken. See you guys then.